Okay. So welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri. Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaivacha Patitana Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namonama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So and I had some technical problems here this evening. Nothing to do with me. I can only apologize on their behalf. So thank you for your patience. So we're going to continue. Let's see, I'll put on the screen. Are you able to see the slideshow? Yes, Yes, Paraj. Oh, good. That's good. Let me see. I'm not very familiar with this. You can see the slide okay? Yeah? All right, let's go ahead. Let's see what we want to achieve here this evening. All right, the process of yoga, mishra, bhakti. We're going to speak about that. We hope you will understand something about yoga, mishra, bhakti this evening. We're going to compare the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra with the chanting of Om and then discuss how the statement a pure devotee can live anywhere and create a Vrindavan atmosphere by his devotional service and how this reflects Prabhupada's mood. And present a comparison of the material and spiritual world based on Gita 8.15 to 22. And then explain how pure devotees' passage to the spiritual world is guaranteed by devotional service based on Bhagavad Gita chapter 8. Okay, so those are our objectives. So chapter begins. Arjuna's questions. We have some questions. You will remember from the end of chapter 7, there were some terms which were used. So Arjuna is going to ask about these questions. He wants to understand more. What, what were these things? So first of all, Arjuna asks, what is Brahman? He wants to know if Brahman means the Jiva or the Paramatma. So that's his question, actually. What is Brahman? Is it the Jiva or is it Paramatma? Different conceptions. We could say we're all Brahman. But actually, we should be Krishna conscious to be actually Brahman. And then, second question, what is the self? Right? The self, is it the physical body or is it the gross, is it the subtle body or the gross body? And then third thing, what are fruitive activities or karma? What, what is this material manifestation? Material manifestation, the term is adibhuta. 
what gross and physical things are being referred to? Are we talking about pots and pans? Are we talking about the bodies of the living entities? Then number five, what are the demigods? That's the Adidaiva. So, is Adidaiva the governor of the demigods? Or is it a demigod? Or is it the universal form? What exactly is it? What is being referred to here? Number six, who is the Lord of Sacrifice? Adi Yagya, right? So, these are Arjuna's questions. Mm, oh, there's more. How does he live in the body? <laughs> How does he live in the body? How do we manage to live in the body? Who is the Lord of Sacrifice? How does he live in the body? He's inquiring about the Adi Yagya. He wants to understand the identity. Who is this Adi Yagya? Is it Vishnu or is it a demigod? And where does he live? Where in the body does he live? Does he live in the, in the, in the mind, in the brain or in the heart or in the senses or where? And how does he live in the body? The number eight, how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? Yeah, we cannot admit these people who come. Let everybody come in. So Arjuna's questions are like that. How can those engaged in devotional service? No, this is the real subject matter of the chapter, which will actually come out. The first uh, six, seven questions, Krishna will deal with them quite briefly, mentioned in verses three and four, right? We'll just go over them quickly. First one, what is Brahman? So Krishna tells Arjuna the jiva is Brahman. The jiva is Brahman. What about Krishna? Krishna is para Brahman, right? There's a difference between the living entity and the Supreme Lord. So the living entity is Brahman, but Krishna is the Parabrahman, he is the Supreme Brahman. And then what about the Self? Number two, the Adi Atma, the Self. What is the nature of the Self? The nature of the Self is to be the servant, right? The constitutional position. Our constitutional position is to be the servant. But when we come in the material world, we have a different consciousness. And our consciousness in the material world, we're trying to be the Lord. We're, we, we're thinking we're the controller. But in spiritual consciousness, in Krishna consciousness, our position is to be the servant of Krishna. Number three. What are fruitive activities or karma? So we should understand karma is not just simply activity, but karma is activity that develops a material body. That is the actual meaning of karma. As a result of these activities, we're developing another material body. So we take so many bodies due to our karma. Of course, particularly in the human form of life, we're getting karma. We're earning our karma. This planet is called uh, the field of karma. In the human form of life, we're earning our karma. Other forms of life, 
the animals and the plants or the demigods, they're suffering and enjoying their karma. But in the human form of life, we're earning our karma. Of course, we also get, we're also suffering and enjoying some karma, but generally we're preparing for the future body. Srila hmm. Prabhupada talks about how the, the, the living entity some, will go to the higher planets and enjoy there, and when our karmas, when we, our good karma is used up, we come down to earth. We may come down in the form of rain, and that rain may enter into the form of grains, and the grain is eaten by the man, and in this way the man then injects his semen into the womb of his wife, and in this way a child is born. You take birth again. So we fall from heaven. We come down in the form of rain. So we should understand the first three questions, what have we learned from them? Krishna has explained the difference between the body and the soul, and he's also explained the difference between the activity of the body and the activities, the, the, activ the bondage of the soul, what causes the soul to be in bondage. And what causes the living entity to, to be in bondage? This is our activities. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, is it okay to ask a question now? Or? Okay. Uh, what is the difference in this particular context? What is the difference between the first two questions? What is Brahman and what is the self? So Brahman is also a living entity, and the self is also the living entity, individual soul. Okay? Yeah. Remember, we were describing it in a different way. Right? First of all, Brahman was the spirit soul, but the self, we are talking about the body. The word Atma, the word Atma can be on different levels. So Adi Atma, it was referring not to the soul, the spirit soul, but it's referring to the body. So we want to understand the self, is it the subtle body or is it the gross body? In this context, Brahman is actually, in general, Brahman is referred to the impersonal realization of Krishna or, you know, the personal effulgence of Krishna. That's what we refer to when we say Brahman. No, no, that's, that's not just what we refer when we talk about Brahman. We're talking about the spiritual nature, the nature of the living entity. Mm. The, the living entity is a spiritual spark. The spark is a particle of the spiritual energy of Lord Krishna, right? That's Brahman. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, right? Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, Krishna says Brahma Bhuta. One who knows he's Brahman, then he's a joyful soul. We want to become situated on the platform of Brahman. In other words, we understand we're not the body, but we're spiritual beings, we're spirit souls, part and parcel of Lord Krishna. Right? Right, yep. So have you got it clear? Yeah, no, this probably this is going on constantly. People coming to get entrance into the classroom. It's a great disturbance if everybody comes in and I have to admit them. I think you just leave it open and just let them come in. We didn't have people. Of course, we asked the students, you should come in time. You know, please try to come in time. You come late, it's, it's just a disturbance to the class. Okay, so Brahman, we're talking about the spiritual nature of the living entity. We pointed out Krishna is the Parabrahman and the living entity is Brahman. Two types of Brahman. And what is the self? Is, it, is the self the physical body, gross body or the subtle body? So in answer to that, Lord Krishna points out the nature of the self is to be the servant. 
By nature, he's a servant. What are fruitive activities? Fruitive activities are mean, referring to karma. And so, uh, Lord Krishna is describing the difference, well, he's explained the difference between the body and the soul, but he's also explained the difference between the activities of the body and the activities of the soul. There's material activities and spiritual activities. So the material activities, they keep the living entity in bondage in the material world. And the spiritual activities take us out of the material world. But spiritual activities, there's no karma. There's no karma, there's no bondage. So the soul is spiritual in nature. It's n the nature of the soul is to do devotional service to Krishna. And karma pertains to the material body or our conditioned nature. So that takes us up to text number four. Text number four, Krishna answers the other things, explaining about uh, what is the what is the material manifestation? So the material manifestation is described as Adi Buddha, and the material manifestation is described to be constantly changing. The nature of life in the material world, the physical nature, undergoes changes. Material bodies go through changes, right? Six changes. Six changes which we should memorize, we should know often comes up. Six changes. We take birth and then we begin to grow and then we, we may maintain for some time. And then we be, produce some byproducts, and then we dwindle, and then we're finished or we die. So this is the nature of the objects in the physical, in the material world, Adi Bhutas. They're created, and they're they come to an end. They're destroyed sometime. So that's the material manifestation. And then number five, what are the demigods? So Adi Daiva. So who are, who is who is Adi Daiva? So this is answered that the the idea of the universal form is actually the Adi Daiva, because the universal form includes all the demigods. It's, so it's Adi Daiva. And in the Bhagavad Gita, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, you can see there's in the second canto, uh, it's mentioned there Adi Daivata Virata Rup. So the Adi Daivata Virata Rup, the universal form of the Adi Daivata. And so th this is being asked here who, who are the demigods? What are the demigods? So we, we learn about the Adi Daivata, the actual controller of all this situation, the original form of the Lord. It's, it's the universal form which includes all the demigods here in this material world. It becomes confusing if we look at the English. It's better to look at the Sanskrit. Consider Adi Daivata. You know, we've translated it here, but it's, it becomes confusing to see the English. But when we see it in the Bhagavad Gita, it's better. Then number six, who is the Adi Yagya? Adi Yagna. Who is the Adi Yagna? 
And where does he live? And so the Adi Yagna, that is Lord Krishna, the super soul. He is the Lord of all sacrifices. And he is present in the body of all living entities as the Paramatma. He is the Lord of sacrifice and he lives in the heart. When we perform a sacrifice, we worship the demigods or we may worship the changing material manifestation. And when we do that, we're, we're actually worshipping Krishna indirectly. And so then we come to the final question, which is, the main topic in the chapter. How can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? So this was touched on a little bit at the end of the seventh chapter. If you remember the final verse of the seventh chapter, Krishna was saying that those who are in full consciousness of me who know me, the Supreme Lord, to be the governing principle of the material manifestation of the demigods and of all methods of sacrifice, can understand and know me even at the time of death. So Adi Buddha, Adi Daiva, Adi Yagna. They can understand. If, if we understand these things, then we can know Krishna even at the time of death. So, we want to remember him at the time of death. Right? Adi Buddha, Adi Daiva. Adi Buddha meaning, we said Adi Buddha meaning how the Lord controls the whole material manifestation. And Adi Daiva, the source of the universal form and the demigods. And Adi Yagya, the one who, the one who we perform sacrifice to please, we do sacrifice for his pleasure. So these are different ways of recognizing Krishna as the Supreme Lord. And we want to be able to think of Krishna in these different ways. Just like Arjuna, he has to think of Krishna, even though he's fighting on the battlefield. But we have to fight also on the spiritual platform. We have to fight to come to that spiritual platform, to overcome this material energy. So if we do like that, then we transcend karma. And we don't have to worry about taking another material body, right? So these are Arjuna's questions. We're going to look more at this final question, how to remember Krishna at the time of death. Are there any other questions before I go on? Okay. Okay, so here's a famous verse. You might want to memorize it. Anta kale chamameva smaran mukva kale varam ya prayati samad bhavam yati nas yatra samshaya. And whoever at the end of his life quits his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature. Of this there is no doubt. So the end of life, whenever it comes, we have to be ready. We want to be able to think of Krishna alone, not just Krishna and uh, our money, our car, our family and so on, 
We want to think of Krishna, just simply Krishna. So this is the real meaning of Bhakti Yoga. We want to obtain the nature of Krishna, we have to be able to fix our mind of, on Krishna. And it comes that, that it, it's not an easy thing, we know antakale at the end of life. Now that is the real challenge because as Srila Prabhupada explains, he said everyone's afraid at the end of life. It's nature, human nature, that we're afraid. Although we know we're spirit souls, but still we're afraid what's going to happen, where am I going, like that. Here's a quote from Srila Prabhupada. Could someone read this for me, please? This is the ultimate goal of Krishna consciousness, that antakale, at the time of death, at the end of life, antakale chamameva, certainly smaran, you will remember Krishna. Deity worship is especially meant for this purpose, so that you go on worshipping the deity of Radha and Krishna, and then you will be able to think of Radha Krishna always within your heart. This practice is needed. Lecture Bhagavad Gita 8.1, Geneva 74, text 7. Thank you, Prabhu. So, Prabhupada is stressing here the importance of the deity worship, how it's very helpful for us to fix our mind on Krishna. Right? Smaran, you will remember Krishna. Antakale chamam eva smaran mukva kalevaram. Right? Remembering Krishna. So that word there, smaran, that remembering, this is what's required. So the deity worship helps us for this purpose. And whether you do the deity worship in the temple or in your home, there's no difference. You're worshipping the deity. The standards should be very similar. Srila Prabhupada described how his father used to worship deities, Radha and Krishna. And he said his father was a pure devotee. He had a small business, but every night he'd come home and do his puja. So worship of the deities help us, helps us to remember the Lord and to cultivate a relationship with the Lord. When you serve the deity, then naturally you're going to think about the deity throughout the day. And you'll think, tomorrow morning I'm going to serve the deity. And you'll think about what dress you're going to give the deity and how you're going to decorate the altar and so on. So this is all very helpful for us in the process of remembering Krishna, fixing the mind. So, a little exercise for you. Uh, do we have somebody here who can put devotees into pairs? Uh, yes, Maharaj. My name is uh, Manamohana Krishna Dasa. I'm hosting it. Um, so, if you want me to make a breakout rooms, I'll sure make it. Yeah, how many people do we have here? There are 32, uh, Maharaj. Okay, so could we, we could have 16 groups. Give everyone a partner. Yes, yes Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. But before you break up the groups, let's look at the question. Yep. Yeah, sometimes devotees say, My devotional service is so difficult. I am unwell and I have so many problems. I wish Krishna would just take me right now. What would you say to such a devotee? What can you say about his or her attitude? Right? He's saying, I wish Krishna would just take me right now. What would you say to such a devotee? Or what can you say about his or her attitude? This is what we want you to discuss. We want to hear from you. Maybe actually, maybe partners, maybe we have groups of four. That would be eight groups. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Uh, there are exactly 30, uh, so 
Uh, I'll make it accordingly. Thank you. So you can, everyone make a note of the question here and discuss in your group and we'll have a spokesman from the groups to tell us what you consider to be the answer. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Recording in progress. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, shall I uh, close all the rooms? Or will you give some, some yeah, more time? You know, I'm going into rooms, there's nobody there, or there's nothing going on at all. Uh, they all joined uh, room 7, 6, 5, 4, oh, 3, uh, I was. 1. I was put into room eight. <laughs> there was no. Uh, that was automatically it was gone. Yeah. There was nobody there. I wondered what was going on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what? Two room? more were there. I have uh, made them join in another room. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay.
because the person, uh, the devotee is trying to, you know, escape from the problems. He is, uh, uh, the devotee is not able to tolerate the situation. So, like, you know, so, uh, uh, and in, in bhakti, uh, we cannot expect to the result in, in any very short time, as we always, uh, you know, as we learn in nectar of instruction also, like, uh, we need to have patience, dhairiya is required. So, we cannot expect the result, uh, fast results. And we need to tolerate the situations, whatever situations uh, we may come across. Uh, because these uh, situations are due to our own uh, past karmas. Uh, so, um, so it is, uh, I mean, we'll have to, um, what to say, um, handle that situation. But at the same time, we need to surrender to Krishna. We need to completely dedicate uh, to Him. Then He will be, uh, you know, helping us to uh, handle the situation properly and uh, you know um, slowly and gradually we will be able to uh, handle the situation and also and that's what always uh, Krishna says no, the, uh, the, the nature of uh, we have studied in the first uh, six chapters that the nature of Sthita uh, uh, Muni is that whatever problems comes in life he is considering that it is uh, because of the mercy of Krishna Recording in progress. Okay, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, shall we come on? Yeah, I, I think so, Prabhu. I think we can close the rooms. Shroud Maharaj, I'll do that. Hare Krishna, everyone's out of the room now? I think so. Not yet, a few more. Oh, still a few more coming, okay. The breakout rooms are closed, Maharaj. We can start. Okay, off. thank you, Prabhu. All right, so we would like to have a volunteer from maybe can we start with group number one? The spokesman to please tell us what you discussed. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I'll be the spokesperson for group number one, and I've written down some points that we shared as a group. We said that a devotee that is feeling despondent and feeling unwell and saying all these things here, as much as we can identify or rather make them understand that yes, we can relate to you feeling unwell and having all the issues, but the instructions that we have been given are quite clear that maybe try to think less of the problems and by doing a way to do that is to think more about Krishna and engage yourself more in Krishna's service. And one way that we discussed you can do is by 
chanting, by chanting the Lord's names. Uh, one of our group members said that chanting is also uh, considered a form of service. So even though you may feel that you are unable to get up and to cook something, a full feast, you can still pick up your beads, chant something that will um, assist you to come out of the slum that you are feeling. And then we also said, we would tell the devotee that actually we are fortunate because the difficulties that we are facing are actually decreased by Krishna himself. So although you are feeling unwell and you're not feeling great, Krishna has actually taken a big chunk of that suffering because of his causeless mercy. Uh, so we encourage him by saying that. We also said that according to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has instructed us to develop quite a high level of tolerance. So that can be done step by step by step by again chanting the Lord's holy names. Um, so developing patience and also uh, remembering the other great devotees who have suffered major calamities, Hairas Thakur, Prad Maharaj, they've suffered so many difficulties, but during the midst of that suffering, they always, always try to remember Krishna in some way or some other form or another. Those are the points that we have discussed as a group. But I think it, it would be a bit of a challenge that, uh, you know, you, to tell me to be like Prahlad Maharaj or Haridas Thakur, you know. They have really great devotees, you know, and I'm just nothing, you know. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just having so many problems, you know. But, you know, they, they, those people, you know, I mean, I can't even begin to compare myself to them. We were thinking perhaps not to so much be them, but try to emulate them. If you're not able to emulate, then maybe read about them. Then in that way, you can find some inspiration. Maybe not so much to be like them, but the more you read about them, learn a bit more about how they navigated the difficulties, you may be inspired in some small way of your own to navigate the difficulties. Mm. Yeah, and you tell me to chant the holy name, but I, I've been chanting the holy name. I'm a devotee, you know. I'm, it's a, we're talking about devotees, you know. I'm a devotee, I chant, you know, but I'm still having these problems. Perhaps if you are still chanting, have you looked at the quality of your chanting? Do you make sure that you rise early or is your chanting maybe in the middle of the day when it's hectic and you have to um, be minding this child or uh, your spouse? Maybe try improving the quality of your chanting where you rise early and you make sure that during that precious hour you're getting good quality japa without your mobile next to you without getting distracted. Oh, I'll finish my, the rest of my rounds later. Okay. So you're becoming a bit personal now. <laughs> you're looking at my sadhana. You know? What, uh, we do ask, what would you say about this person's attitude? My group members can please jump in. Yeah, maybe I can just uh, chip in a bit. You know, Darvi Radha Mataji did a marvelous job. Uh, the attitude is like 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 demanding. As if Krishna is the order supplier, I wish Krishna would just take me right now. Like curtailing the number of years left to continue to do service, and like as if wanting it all to end because of the current situation. So is that good? You know, does that not mean any? I mean, do you not worry when you hear somebody talk like that? Wouldn't you get, you know, wow, my, he's talking about commit, committing suicide, you know? Somebody talks yeah. like, somebody talks like that, we, we really get worried about it, you know? This person's thinking about suicide. On a real practical level, we have, okay, I would say in our yatra, things like devotee care, where if there is a devotee of which there have been cases who do speak like this and they just find it too much, then we would refer them to professionals that are still devotees and at the same time they are in the, in the profession of helping with psychological issues, mental health issues, 
and we would try to direct them in that direction since we in our capacity may not be able to assist them yeah definitely it, you, i mean if we, we if we think like that i mean if we take it to that level we think seriously about it there there is a possibility that maybe this person's just going to walk off the walk off the roof you know walk off the the balcony and or something you know i mean these things happen they do happen and they happen to devotees you know devotees sometimes walk into trains and they walk off the 18th floor of an apartment building These, uh, this, as you said, I, it's good you brought up devotee care because this is really what it's about, I think, that there's a, a great need for devotee care. Uh, and, and this is a, a very, and a, somebody in this kind of situation, you would think you would really want to give them devotee care. And uh, you talk about psychiatrists. Well, it might have to go that far, but it could, it, it, what could also be done is, you know, maybe personal association. association. Yeah, being with a person, you know, spending a lot of time with them and not letting them be on their own. That's something which can really make a difference, you know. That, just letting them have some company to be with somebody. Could we hear from another group? Would some other group like to offer something to us to give us some uh, thing to consider? Maharaj, we can take random groups, like I'm from group six. Yes, okay. Uh, so as, as we start to uh, read this, uh, the thing comes, my devotional service is difficult, so there's an analogy like, there's no diamond and coal are similar, but if coal wants to become diamond, it has to go under uh, big pressure for a long time, then it becomes diamond. So if we want to succeed, we have to take the difficulty. Then when we come to the second line, you know, un I am unwell and have lots of problems because of the, uh, uh, because of that. So uh, this ha for we have to be practical for this, and we have to check our schedule, how we are doing things. We have to regularize our things like what time we are doing in sadhana and then our walk time and then do we taking care of the health. So here we have to be practical, practically you know, see what we are actually doing. This will really help us. And when devotee says like, I wish Krishna take me, then there, here the problem comes because for the devotee, there, even if Krishna takes him to Vaikuntha and he is staying in the material world, for him there is no difference because Wherever devotee is staying, he is chanting and he is doing Krishna Seva, that place is Baikun. So, for him. So, that is the uh, issue with the you know, attitude. If he can explain, he understands this, like whether he goes to Baikun or he is doing Seva here, he is taking Krishna's name, he is already in the Baikun. He is already in the Go, go Lok with Krishna. Mm. Well, we, we have to consider, you know, is, is, is this person actually ready to go with Krishna? If Krishna comes, you know, where is he going to take him? It doesn't mean, if Krishna comes, it doesn't mean he's going to take him to Goloka. He may take him down to Patala. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't know. You, you don't, we don't know exactly what kind of qualification he has. What's his situation? Hare Krishna Maharaji. Yes, Prabhu. So, uh, we are from group four. So yeah, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, please. So we are from group four. Please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, we, we discussed, we were four people and we, we, we discussed. Now here the situation is uh, uh, there's uh, the devotee is really disturbed. And, and so what and, and uh, he, he want to leave this body as uh, you rightly mentioned so probably we can say that this uh, happiness or sorrow is like day and night so right now it is in difficult situations and in very difficult situations but these days did also pass so basically we have to develop the 
faith for Krishna, love for Krishna, and at the same time, uh, Krishna says, or as the Kunti Maharani says, that um, if he, if you are in difficulty, then you are able to remember Krishna more. Like our suffering is all because of the past karma. So it is good that when we are suffering, all the past karmas are getting nullified, and then we are we are rightly equipped to uh, uh, get purified and develop the pure uh, Krishna, love for Krishna, and then can move permanently to uh, Bhagavad Dham. So probably we have to convince that this uh, uh, happiness and sorrow is like uh, day and night, and right now it is a difficult time, so that it will also pass. So only thing is, we must advise the devotee to develop more faith on Krishna, do uh, the chanting or uh, bhakti more sincerely, develop love for uh, Krishna and uh, think that this is a prasad of Krishna and we have to assume that probably because of the past karma, this is the suffering. So in this process, not only it will get nullified, but Krishna is so merciful that probably would have suffered more, but because of Krishna mercy, your suffering is uh, less. So probably we can uh, uh, change this kind of positive positivity and with the faith of Krishna, probably it can help in improving the conditions of the devotee. Okay, so some in encouraging words there. You try to encourage the person to come out of it a bit and not feel so uh, depressed and troubled by his own mind. What would you say about their attitude? Attitude, it is basically, it is a difficult, so you can say that something like is uh, escapist, like you want to uh, run away from the situations so and probably uh, uh, he is not in a position to face the problem and he thinks that death is the solution for it. But we have to say that like, again you are going to leave this body, again you are going to uh, come back in another body. So this is not the end of it. So instead of uh, uh, ending the body is not the solution because soul is uh, uh, immortal and we are going to take the new body and, and, and then the suffering will continue. So why not face these situations in the same body itself? But the overall the attitude, it looks to be that he is so fed up that you want to run away. So this is a, some kind of escapism it looks to be. Yes. Yeah. Sir. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. So there is one stop in Mukundu Mansa saying that the Kulasikara Allah says that Krishna Tvadi Yatapanta Pantara. So he says that the Prana Prayana Samya Kapapapa is right. So he says that I cannot thank your name, I, get, I could not remember you at the time of death. Now I am in a good uh, health. He, he can take me now. Mm -hmm. We cannot say that the person's attitude is bad or like comparing to that. Uh, but the person is really maybe expressing his uh, real will. So, but in the same same case like Arjuna also, he is telling that I should not uh, know. Maybe he may be remember or not. I don't know. So Prabhupada quotes that also in Bhagavad Gita in one one. Yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up. Actually, so it's coming up. So he quotes that. So Krishna says that, uh, see, I am in the... And the same thing, same came, the case is discussed in these openings also. That Prabhupada says that, uh, the Lord in the heart for us, Paramatma, He remembers you more what you did for Him. So there is no need to worry for a devotee. That, uh, But He has to be always engaged in His prescribed duty, as like uh, in the case of Arjuna, it's, it's going to be fighting. So you, you continue your duty, you do your duty for Him. So obviously, you, you, Krishna will remember all those you know, service that we have rendered to that uh, the Lord, uh, even though it is done with so much of difficulty, and uh, you know we, are, we, we may not be able to be happy to you know kill like like Arjuna killing Bhishma or Drona. Uh, it's not it's not going to be a good situation. Uh, he'll be in problems. He understands that he has to may he may even feel bad that uh, I have to suffer bad karma also. But although whatever it is. But it, he has to do, engage in his prescribed duties uh, so that Lord uh, could remember that uh, the service rendered to him because it is done for the Lord and, and his uh, instruction, and his instruction. Okay. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. I'm from Rukti Maharaj. So, um, also, like, we can appreciate, you know, all his uh, good qualities or spiritual qualities. We can make him remember of his services that he or she has done to the temple or to the community in general. 
so that he can feel the positiveness um, and also we can like we can praise him like that give some hope and also we can assure him like uh, you are going through this difficult time this is a kind of test for test uh, the, that uh, Krishna is taking to you because Krishna always takes this kind of test to the devotee uh -huh. and you need to pass this test so you don't want to fail this so <laughs> be tolerant like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita Matra Sparshastha Kaunteya Sita Shnashukha Dupada that verse and also you can tell him uh, give him assurance that uh, uh, okay when we when will you i mean when you are going to t uh, test the you know the happiness then that will be more sweeter because uh, like testing the happiness uh, you know after the suffering uh, becomes more sweeter <laughs> right so all these positive words we can say uh, say him so that he feels more positive and you know <laughs> that kind of thing Maharaj. okay Maharaj. yeah thank you and yeah, so encourage him to be positive to see the good let him know that you know, there's so many other people suffering much more than him also. <laughs> you know, we always think of ourselves to be the most unfortunate, but there's so many people in much worse situations, and they tolerate. So, devotee also should be tolerant. Okay. Krishna Maharaj. Yes? Maharaj, this is Srimati Lalita from Group 4. Yes, Maharaji. Group 5, sorry. Uh, so, uh, wonderful points were shared from other group. Just one more point what our group discussed was that uh, we just remembered that recently a great, a wonderful devotee in Mayapur passed away, Audarya Dhamma Mataji. So, uh, she was in great pain uh, and of her physical body. So, she was expressing her desire, let me just leave now. So, devotees were telling her, uh, just leave it up to Krishna. Uh, let Krishna decide when you want to leave. Uh, right now, you uh, take care some more time. Krishna is giving you more time to think of him. So just utilize that to practice more. Very nice. Yes, very nice. Krishna is giving you more time to think of him. That's a very nice <laughs> presentation to give someone who is in pain at the time of death, that take this as an opportunity. Krishna is giving you time to think of him more. Thank you, Maharaji, for sharing with us. Thank you, Okay, and Prabhu was just bringing up about Kula Shekhar, and so here's the point here. And so <coughs> we ask, should we desire, like Kula Shekhar, to die now? Just like Kula Shekhar was saying, Krishna Tvadiya Pada, let me die now while I can still think of Krishna, while I can still chant the holy name, because he was worried at the time of death, his throat would be choked up with mucus and he wouldn't be able to remember Krishna. So whatever we do in life will be tested at the time of death. If death came today, would you say you are ready? Is suicide a means to attain Krishna? What happens to a devotee who commits suicide? So first question, if death came today, would you say you're ready? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, it, that's a very, very hard thing to say that I'm ready. <laughs> we know we may have to die any time, may come very soon. I, I can't say I'm, I'm ready, but <laughs> certainly we should be thinking about this. We're trying to get ready, right? Krishna consciousness is, Janani Vas Prabhu would always say uh, that Krishna consciousness is the art of dying, that we're learning how to prepare for death. So are we ready? We're, we have to get ready. What about, is suicide a means to attain Krishna? Not usually, is it? And what happens to a devotee who commits suicide? Anybody would like to say? He becomes a Brahmarakshas, Brahmanically initiated devotee. Really? become Brahma Rakshas. Well, what happened to 
Junior Hari Das. Uh, I think that is uh, uh, in uh, taking permission from Lord Chaitanya or to please Lord Chaitanya. But we devotees are not at that level. So if we imitate, the effect is bad. Yes, right. There was a case, you know, in Srila Prabhupada's time, there was a one sannyasi. His name was Vishnu Jana Swami. Right? And he, he had come to Prabhupada and he had asked about this, about Junior Haridas. And, and Prabhupada said, yes, that's right, Junior has, they said, this is sannyasi, breaks the vow, you should. But then Prabhupada went on and said, but it, it was an example, it should not be taken, uh, that we should try, that we should have to follow like that. He said, it shouldn't be the standard for everyone. If they give up their, and they break their sannyas, they shouldn't have to, they don't have to go like Junior Haridas and enter into the Triveni. Someone asked uh, a, sen a very senior member in the Gaudiya Math, a senior sannyasi, an elder sannyasi in the Gaudiya Math, they asked him, because what happened, one of the brahmacharis in Vrindavan, one day he, he walked into the Radharani Express, you know, he committed suicide. He just walked into the Radharani Express. So they asked this very senior sannyasi in the Gaudiya Math, what would happen? Would he go back to Godhead? But the sannyasi said, no, he said, I don't think so. He said, you don't go back to Godhead by committing suicide. And Lord Chaitanya also told Sanatana Goswami, because Sanatana Goswami at one point was preparing to commit suicide. And Lord Chaitanya chastised him and told him, you cannot go back to Godhead by committing suicide. He said, if I thought by committing suicide to go back to Godhead, I would have done it long ago. But no devotee gets, goes back to Godhead by committing suicide. So it's not a means to attain Krishna. This should be understood. Are there any questions on this or any more comments? Sri Krishna Maharaj Yes, Prabhu. So, uh, we have understanding that this material body it is also a part and partial of its external energy of Krishna. So we have got no control on this body as long as uh, this soul is inside and then if you want to use this body which has been given by Krishna, for his service, then it is fine. But we have got the, the moment we think that this body belongs to me, and then I have got full right to uh, destroy it. Then the, uh, 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 the uh, sense of possessiveness, possessiveness comes into uh, play. So that means there is a desire uh, to own this body, and and then uh, uh, the, the whole feeling of I am the doer. And, and, and that, that way, in, in fact, it is taking away from the bhakti. So can we have this understanding, Raji? Oh, yes, this is a very good point. Thank you very much for bringing this up. Yeah, very nice point. But this body doesn't belong to us. The body is given to us, like on rent, right? <laughs> we have to use it for the service of Krishna. And we don't have the right to destroy it. And that's why the people who may commit suicide, they will get punishment, they will get reactions for that. That they won't be given a body, they'll become, as Mataji said, maybe a Brahma Raksha, a ghost or something like that. So that, that is the reaction for abusing the human form of life. The body was given to us and we have to use it. I, I do remember a case, we had one devotee, uh, he was working, I was working with him, I was quite close to him. 
So he got throat, throat cancer and he tried to treat it, he tried to cure it, he underwent some painful, very painful treatment without success. And then he went to his spiritual master because he'd suffered for a couple of years and he found he couldn't do any service, he could hardly speak because of throat cancer and he was spitting up blood and so many things. So it was a, not a pleasant condition. So he went to a spiritual master and he got permission that he could just simply fast until he left the body. And so he did that. He stopped eating food and he fasted and it took him two weeks and gave up the body. He was chanting to the moment he left the body, up until the end. So is that considered suicide in that situation? Maharaj, this cannot be considered suicide because basically the thing is, he is not uh, taking another material means to cure the disease, but uh, ultimately is surrendering and whatever the suffering he has got in this body he is ready to bear that but he don't want to create an artificial means of suffering even Prabhupada at like one point of he said that he don't want to stay in the hospital and he asked his devotees to take him away when he was in New York so probably this is the kind of situations we can see that he is surrendered to the Krishna but he don't want to prolong his suffering by artificial means uh, through the current medical practices which may work, which may not work, but ultimately we are hindering in the process of that may be the personal choice. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly I think, you know, that you know, in this case I was telling about, you know, he took the permission from a spiritual master and he, and he was thinking that because I'm not able to do service for Krishna anymore in this body, therefore I should it's time for me to give up this body. And so he prepared himself to give up the body by fasting. And in a couple of weeks he gave up the body. And so his thought was that he wanted to do service for Krishna because his the physical body was so diseased, he was his service his main service was preaching and talking about Krishna and leading Kirtan and so on. He couldn't do these things. And so that's why he gave up the body. So certainly, as you say, that's not suicide. But he's thinking about getting a better body to serve Krishna. Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's see. All right, someone like to read? Chapter 8, page 7. So work is there, just like Arjuna. Arjuna is fighting. That is also Krishna consciousness. Ma Manusmar Yudhyacha. Krishna said, you chant, you remember me, at the same time fight. He never said that simply fight or simply chant. Because in the material world, that is not possible. Therefore chanting must be there. But at the same time, you have to work. How to continue this movement? The movement requires energy. Bhagavad Gita 16.9, Hawaii, February 5, 1975. Okay, text number 7. Lord Krishna is saying, Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities dedicated to me, and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. So Srila Prabhupada is making the point here that Krishna said, first of all, first, you first remember me and at the same time, do your duty, fighting. So the first thing Krishna said was to think of him. So sometimes we, you know, often it happens, we just do service, we just become, you know, we're, we're so attached, we're so fruitive, we just want to work, we just do service. 
We don't think, but what Krishna really wants is that we will think of him and then also serve Krishna. So this is the important point here. Not, that, not just simply fight or just simply chant, but work for Krishna. Remember Krishna. So Prabhupada saying chanting must be there. Okay? So remembering Krishna. This. Okay? Uh, text number, that's text number seven. And then we go on to how to remember Krishna more. Text number eight. Again, Prabhupada's descri uh, Lord Krishna's describing. He said, He who meditates on me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the path, he, O Partha, is sure to reach me. So Krishna is repeating. You can see like seven and eight is similar. The same point about remembering Krishna. Right? Remembering Krishna is so important for us. We have to, cont we have to develop this habit to think of Krishna. So we have to cultivate this. So how to remember Krishna? That is described in text number nine. Lord Krishna is describing how we can meditate. Someone can read for us, please. Remembering Yo Krishna, yoga practice is meditation on the super soul within. Similarly, by chanting Hare Krishna, one fixes his mind always on the Supreme Lord. The mind is fickle and therefore it is necessary to engage the mind by forcing to think of Krishna. One example often given is that of a caterpillar that thinks of becoming a butterfly and so is transformed into a butterfly in the same life. Similarly, if we constantly think of Krishna, it is certain that at the end of our lives, we shall have the same bodily constitution as Krishna. Bhagavad Gita 8.9. Mm -hmm. The mind is fickle. So very important for us to engage the mind by force to think of Krishna. So, text number nine, we have uh, Lord Krishna giving us different items by which we can remember Krishna. The super soul, actually. This section, we're coming to this section on uh, yoga mishra bhakti. So, yoga, the yogis, they are always meditating on the super soul. So, how to meditate on the super soul? Describe for us in text number nine. One should meditate on the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything, as he who is the oldest, he who, who is the controller, that's three, who is the smaller than the smallest, four, who is the maintainer of everything, five, who is beyond all material conception, six, who is inconceivable, seven, who is always a person, eight. He is luminous like the sun, nine. And he is transcendental, beyond this material nature. So Krishna has given us these ten items by which we can remember the Lord. It's a good exercise for us to reflect on these different qualities. Here, of course, in Prabhupada's purport, Prabhupada's directing us to chanting Hare Krishna. We're not doing Yoga Mishra Bhakti. We're doing Prema Bhakti. Right? We want to chant Hare Krishna in the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We're not just doing Yoga Mishra Bhakti. But chanting Hare Krishna is... This is like the elevator, the, or the lift, the quick way to the top. The other processes take a long time. But chanting Hare Krishna very quickly, we can get the benefit. 
Okay, Yoga Mishra Bhakti. Prabhupada explains here. Someone read? Those who are engaged in worshipping the form or archa of, archa of the Lord or who are engaged in meditation on the Lord simply for liberation from material bondage also know by the grace of the Lord the purpose of Brahman, Adi Bhuta, etc. Bhagavad Gita 7.29 purport. Okay, so that's the, the last text of the seventh chapter. Actually, the seventh and eighth chapter, they go together. They're like one chapter, really. You know, you can see the continuation because Krishna was bringing up these terms, Adi Bhuta, Adi Daiva, Adi Yajna. And so then in chapter 8, Arjuna asks, what is this? What explain this? And so the, the concept of Yoga Mishra Bhakti was introduced there in that final verse. So worshipping the deity, worshipping the archa is a meditation on the Lord for liberation. And we do the same meditation, chanting on the holy name. Another quote from Prabhupada? Yeah, someone like to read? Go ahead, Manaji. Chanting home is a transcendental but mechanical way of getting into trance. Persons who are unable to realize the transcendental personal form or name of the Lord because of the imperfect senses or trained to the practice of self-realization, by this mechanical process of regulating the breathing and simultaneously repeating OM within the mind. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.1.17 Alright, so we should understand people chanting OM. OM is, Krishna says, Pranava Sarva Vedeshu, right? So Krishna is OM, the syllable, I say, I'm the syllable OM in the Vedic mantras. So chanting Om is not wrong, but what's the problem? What's the difference between chanting Hare Krishna, chanting Om? You'll remember in Prabhupada's time there was this one man, Allen Ginsberg. He was a famous uh, beat poet and he was the author of a famous book called How. How? And, uh, and so he had been to India and he was also chanting Om and he talked to Prabhupada about chanting Om. And Prabhupada laughed. And Prabhupada thought it was funny, chanting Om. So how would we deal with people who chant Om? You know, you have people who come and they say, oh, we chant Om. Chanting Om is also transcendental. So how are we going to present the chanting of Hare Krishna in comparison to Om? What are the some chanting, some points? The chanting Om is also transcendental because Krishna said uh, he is Om, but Om will give only impersonal understanding of the Lord, not the personal realization. Right. That's certainly made point here that Om is the impersonal feature of the Lord, not the personal teacher. Yeah. And, and also Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So as followers of Gaudiya uh, Vaishnava philosophy, we chant Hare Krishna. Yes, if we're, following, if we're following Lord Chaitanya, he chanted Hare Krishna, we have to follow the teacher. Okay, those are some points. Any other points? Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, Om is, is of course addressing the Krishna and this is more of the karma kand as per the Vedas where we are doing the yajna. But in Kali Yuga nothing is pure, so uh, we cannot offer even ourselves in the uh, in, in the fire of yajna. So the thing is, since we, uh, we live in a, such a impure uh, age where everything is impure, so the thing is. First, this body and whatever the uh, contents which is used in Homa, that is to be purified before offering it in the form of Om to the Krishna. 
and that's the reason that the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is a self-purificatory process which we have to purify and, and then uh, we can able to have the uh, uh, Krishna realizations. That, this thing. Yeah, is chanting Om, is this going to be part of Bhakti? Well, described here, Yoga Mishra Bhakti, there must be some devotion there, but it's mixed with the yoga practice. As Prabhupada explains, that the, the chanting of Om is it, it, it's part of the mechanical process, regulating the breathing, pranayama, and some, at the same time repeating Om within the mind. So repeating on within the mind, that's simply for our own deliverance. But Prabhupada says chanting Hare Krishna is good for the, everyone who hears the chanting. So even you're on your own, you may think you're alone, there are so many living entities, they're all benefited by the loud chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. But you may chant Om in your mind, that's just simply for your own deliverance. You're not benefiting, you're not giving help, you're not purifying anyone else. So this is a, an, another distinction between the chanting of Hare Krishna and the chanting of Om. People were complaining to Haridas Thakur that you chant very loudly. Or was it Kulaveka Sridhar? They both used to chant quite loud. And so they were complaining anyway, you chant so loud. Where in the scriptures does it say you should have to chant so loud? And so they, Haridash replied that, he said, who's better? One who maintains one's own self or one who can maintain a hundred people? He said, obviously if I can maintain one hundred people, that's better than just maintaining myself. So he said, if I just chant the, the holy name of the Lord in my mind, or if I just chant Om within my mind, that doesn't benefit anybody else. It's only my benefit, for my benefit. But what about others? We should think also about delivering others, giving mercy to others. And another, another important thing is that it's, chanting Hare Krishna is much more attractive. There's so many nice tunes, different melodies, wonderful kirtans. You chant Om, it becomes very boring, very quickly. But chanting Hare Krishna is endless, it's an ocean of bliss. Right? Maharaj, can we give also the reference of the Kali Sankran Nishad, where it is said that this 16 letter mantra we should chant. Yes, okay, that's scriptural evidence for the chanting of Hare Krishna. That the 16 words destroy all the dirt of the Kali Yuga. Very good, yes. Scriptural evidence is there. The, the chant of Om is also. In, written here in Bhagavad Gita, it's a process for controlling the mind. It's given there also, you know, they can come up with evidence from the scriptures that we should chant Om. But we have to compare the merits of the two processes. Um, Maharaj, we can give the scriptural reference of Kari Santarna Upanishad to uh, specify that uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra is the mantra specified for this particular age, <coughs> for Kali Yuga. Okay. The Kali Santara Upanishad. Yeah, and that's a Vedic reference. So they want Shruti. You can have it. Kali Santara Upanishad is a Vedic reference. Okay. We'll go ahead. Sometimes there are other mantras also, like Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Narayana, these kind of, there are more mantras. So, 
some people they chant this mantra also. What we should consider? Yes, they are chanting. Some, some people just chant Radhe Radhe or Sita Ram Sita Ram like that. In different samprayas. Yeah, they chant so many. There are many mantras and so you know, different names of the Lord, right? There are different names of the Lord. We have to see how much they can chant. Mm. Some some temples they're chanting um, Jai Ram, Sri Ram, Jai Jai Ram, like that. It's been going on a long time. They're doing Akhand Kirtan. Never stops. The kirtan's going. But our, um, our particular path, as one Prabhu said, we're following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught the chanting of Hare Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada also taught chanting Hare Krishna. I remember just before Prabhupada left the body, I was, I was chanting. We were in, I was in Prabhupada's room in Bombay and before Prabhupada went to Vrindavan. And Prabhupada was just laying there on the bank, on his bed, and, you know, he wasn't doing anything. And, but he wanted kirtan, he wanted devotees to chant. So I was with another devotee, we went to chant, and uh, we had a tiny pair of symbols, and we were chanting. And so at one point, the dev other devotee was leading the kirtan, and so he suddenly started to chant, instead of Hare Krishna mantra, he started to chant Govinda Jai Jai, Gopala Jai Jai. And Prabhupada immediately opened his eyes and looked at us and he said, just chant Hare Krishna. And so that was like the last instruction I ever got from Srila Prabhupada. It was a very, I wasn't really leading the chanting, but still I was with the other devotee, we were only two. And Prabhupada said, just chant Hare Krishna. He just wanted to hear the Hare Krishna mantra. He didn't want anything else. Of course, you read Prabhupada's books, you can see he also writes about, he says, chanting uh, Hare Harai Nama Krishna Yadavai. And he said, this is also Maha Mantra. Hmm. There's a purport there. Prabhupada said, this is Maha Mantra. I think in Chaitanya Charitamrita. But he encouraged that chant. He said, at least in Mayapur, this chanting should go on. He said it was a great favor of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there's different, there are different mantras, different things. But generally in our Hare Krishna movement, we have the Panchatattva mantra, the Hare Krishna mantra, and then this, that one I just sang, which Prabhupada said was a favorite of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Not other mantras, not really much. Some people, they, they do bring in other things. Some people chant Krishna, 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 Krishna. But actually, that's not really Prabhupada's standard of kirtan. I never heard Prabhupada chant these in kirtan. Prabhupada wanted to hear Hare Krishna mantra. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, someone please read this next slide. Sarva Dharvani means the system is called Pratyahar. In the technical language of yogic system, it is called Pratyahar. Pratyahar means just the opposite. Now my eyes are engaged in seeing worldly beauty. I have no retract from enjoying that beauty and must instead see see inside the beauty inside beauty that is called pratyaha pratyaha similarly i have to hear the omkar sound from within so all the senses are to be stopped in their external activities that is the perfection of yoga and concentrate the mind on vishnu murti Mano, Mano Hardi, Mano, Mano Hardi, lecture, Bhagavad Gita 8.12, New York. Okay, so Prabhupada describing the 
Astanga Yoga process, Pratyahara, part of the Astanga Yoga, Yam Niyama San Pranayam, then Pratyahara, Dharana Dhyana Samadhi. So this is Pratyahara, the fifth step, and then Astanga Yoga. And Prabhupada's talking, uh, chant within, to hear the Omkara sound from within. All the senses have to be stopped. How long can do that? How many people can do that? Are people able to do this kind of thing, to stop all their senses and to look within? This is not for ordinary people, not very practical for present age. But chanting Hare Krishna mantra, very powerful. Prabhupada would say, the louder you chant, the more powerful it becomes. So, this process which is being described here, this omkara, and the sound within, and stopping all the senses in their external activities, that's a, this is an indirect process. Right? We are practicing the direct, we take the direct process, we go immediately to bhakti yoga, hearing and chanting, remembering Krishna. Not just simply trying to go through all these different stages, the yam, the niyam, asan, pranayam, then pratyahara, very long, very arduous, how many people could do it? Even yam and niyam, they cannot do. It's a joke. Asana, to get people to sit on the floor, to sit cross-legged. <laughs> How many people can do it? Hardly for ten minutes they can sit. So this kind of yoga process is very special, not for ordinary people. We want to have bhakti yoga, chanting Hare Krishna. Anybody, anywhere, anytime they can chant. But this process, you know, to practice this kind of yoga, you have to read, if you read in the sixth chapter, you've read already, Chapter 6, Bhagavad Gita, where you have to go, what you have to do, how many things you have to practice, so many, so difficult for people in this age. Of course, people, they're expert in imitating. They pretend, you know, I'm going to meditate in my apartment. I live in the city, on the multi-floor, in some condominium, I have my apartment. I'll close the curtains and I'll put on some nice music and I will meditate and I'm in, I'll be in samadhi. We think that is very spiritual. No, spiritual, it's not spiritual. You have to get out, give up all the material, the, the nice apartment, the comfort, the security. You have to go out into the forest, into the holy place, and depend on Krishna. And you have to sit there and concentrate. That's actually meditation. People can't do these things. Going to the forest, there's no forest anymore. So Prabhupada said, let them come to our temple, come to Vrindavan, come to Mayapur, stay in the holy dham. And said so that then you can get the benefit of going to the forest. Okay, so the, this yoga mishra process is really not very practical. Here, another quote from Prabhupada lecture. Please read. So Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In Omkar, there is no difference.
difference so far. The transcendental sound vibration is concerned, but the objective is different. By Omkara, one attains impersonal existence in the Brahma Jyoti. And by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, one attains the spiritual body and is situated in the spiritual planets. Lecture on Chaitanya Chaitanya Mita, New York, 1966. So that's a, a big difference. You go to the Brahman, you go to Brahma Jyoti, or you go into Vaikuntha, or even Goloka. We are not very attracted to the Brahma Jyoti. Impersonal existence means there's no facility for devotional service. So it's not appealing to the devotees. We're looking for activities, but this impersonal existence is negation of activity, stopping everything. Hmm. Okay, so Ananya Bhakti. Pure devotional service. Here's the important verse, text number 14, chapter 9. Ananya Cheta Satatam Yomam Smarati Nityasa. Tasya hamsula bhapata nitya yuktasya yogina. Oh, chapter 8, text 14. Sorry. Yeah, sulabha. Tasya hamsula bhapata. Krishna said, I'm easy to obtain. For one who always remembers me without deviation, I'm easy to obtain, O son of Prita, because of his constant engagement in devotional service. Does it sound very easy? First of all, always remembers Krishna without deviation. And this is not very easy. But if you do it, then Krishna is easy to obtain. Why? Because constant engagement in devotional service. So this is the key. A devotee wants constant engagement in the service of Krishna. And if we get that constant engagement, then it becomes easy. And we've noted these words always and regularly. Then sulabha, then easy, becomes easy to obtain. We like easy things, right? Every, every one of us, we like it to be, it should be easy. So this is the easy process. You just have to do it. You have to always remember Krishna. You have to do it regularly. Every day, chanting, constant chanting, Kirtaniya Sadahari, Lord Chaitanya said, always chant. If we're always chanting, that will help us. That means we're always remembering Krishna. So this is very crucial for our spiritual advancement. So Krishna is describing yoga practice. Previously, the previous verses, we were hearing about Krishna talking about yoga, practice yoga, and then also celibacy and chant Om. But the important point of all of these activities, chanting Om as well, and doing yoga and celibacy, are me meaningless unless we remember Krishna. There has to be remembrance of Krishna. And then, if you do yoga, then you may get liberation. But Krishna is talking now, text, this text 14, he's telling us about pure devotional service, ananya bhakti. Ananya 
Ananya Cheta. Ananya Cheta, Prabhupada says, without deviation of the mind. The mind is very big obstacle in remembering Krishna. Prabhupada mentions here in one lecture on this verse, he said, this verse especially describes the final destination attained by the unalloyed devotees who serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead in Bhakti Yoga. Previous verses have mentioned four different kinds of devotees. Do you remember the four different kinds of devotees? Bhakti Yoga? Who, who were the four kinds of people who come to Krishna? Distress. Yes, distress. The, the inquisitive. Yes. Uh, who wants to? Money. Money. Yes. Those, those who want some material profit or gain, and then also the jnani, the spirit or speculative philosopher, right? So different processes of liberation have also been described. Processes like karma yoga, jnana yoga, hatha yoga, and now we just discussed the principles of the yoga system with some bhakti there, because yoga mishra bhakti. But this verse, this text number 14, this is describing pure bhakti yoga with no mixture of jnana or karma or yoga. It's simply ananya cheta, pure bhakti yoga. The devotee desires nothing but Krishna. The pure devotee does not desire promotion to heaven, uh, he doesn't seek becoming one, he doesn't want to enter the Brahma Jyoti, he doesn't want any of these things. The pure devotee doesn't desire anything. This is the meaning of pure devotee. Pure devotee is niskam. He has no desire for anything, right? Bhukti, mukti, siddhi, kami, sakale, ashanta. Krishna Bhakti Nishkam Sa Esha Shanta. There's a verse there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita describing only the devotee is peaceful because he is Nishkam, he has no material desire. But the other people, the Bhukti, the Mukti, the Siddhi, the Kami, they all have material desires. So they're not peaceful. So peace belongs to the bhakti yogi, not to these other people who are interested, have their own selfish interests. Pure devotee means he just wants to please Krishna. Therefore Krishna says that for anyone who is devoted to him, then the result is he is easy to attain. Yeah, Krishna is conquered by the pure love of his devotees. We have, a, we have a different canteens here in Mayapur. So the one is called the Sulab kitchen, right? <laughs> the Sulab kitchen, where people go to get the Bengali food. The Sulab kitchen, very easy. That it's the cheapest. Okay, going ahead. Okay, here's a big quote for us. Someone like to read? Ananya Bhakti. The special qualification of the pure devotee is that he is always thinking of Krishna without deviation and without considering the time or place. There should be no impediments. 
he should be able to carry out his service anywhere and at any time. Some say that the devotee should remain in holy places like Vrindavana or some holy town where the Lord lived. But a pure devotee can live anywhere and create the atmosphere of Vrindavana by his devotional service. Bhagavad Gita 8.14 Purpat. Thank you, Maharaji. So, Srila Prabhupada is describing like this, that pure devotee can live anywhere and create the atmosphere of Vrindavan. Of course, in the, in the process of our preaching, we always encourage devotees like that because our movement is international and we're preaching in so many different parts of the world and people often think about, oh, I want to go to Vrindavan or I'd love to be go back to Vrindavan. I'm always remember thinking about Vrindavan. And so we encourage them to, you know, create the atmosphere of Vrindavan. So how do you do that? Do you have what do you have some experience in creating a Vrindavan atmosphere? Maharaj, I went to college in Calicut and uh, uh, my Shiksha Guru told me, uh, why don't you start something there? So she uh, advised me how to do it and I did it. And uh, I went room to room to every girl and uh, we started uh, getting together daily for 20 minutes to study Bhagavad Gita. And uh, many of the girls became devotees and the college be, uh, every every day, uh, 9 to 9.20, there was a Vrindavan atmosphere. Uh, oh, very nice. Wonderful. Well done. Very good. At least for 20 minutes there was a Vrindavan atmosphere, yeah? And of course, that 20 minutes, you know, that 20 minutes reading Bhagavad Gita, that would be with you throughout the day. You had something because you'd heard from Krishna for 20 minutes. So you have something to fix your mind on throughout the day. So very nice. Anyone else? How do you create Vrindavan atmosphere in your home? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, yes. So this was a long story. We uh, that was way back in 1984, uh, with when Pitu Prabhu had been I was studying at uh, my engineering undergrad at IIT Kanpur. So uh, under the guidance of uh, Pitu Prabhu, uh, uh, we started uh, chanting, and one of the first we started in our room. So what we used to do that on Saturday, we will uh, have uh, the uh, chanting and they're all young uh, students uh, joining at the age of 16 and 17. And subsequently we moved to a one room quarter and we started from our scholarship money, we started collecting and uh, cooking prasadam and we used to be a, around a uh, whole entire evening, three, four hour uh, uh, congregations. Uh, and the effect was that uh, quite a number of them, after graduations, they have taken uh, uh, full uh, Brahmachar. And of course, quite a few of them has gone to different uh, university to become a professor. And they have been continuing what we started, the body, uh, body chanting process and Sankirtan uh, way back in 35 years back. And almost this today, all IITs, uh, that's the Indian Institute of Technology, uh, they have uh, some of the professor from the same uh, group. They are there heading the uh, Sankirtan uh, movement. And, and some of them, they have taken a full-time, uh, uh, after graduation, a full-time uh, Brahmachari, uh, so, which, uh, so, so, so we, we, we try to make the same thing. And we always, in the vacations, we will go to Brindavan and Mayapur. Uh, we will take a bus load of uh, students to go over there. We will stay there for the entire mid-semester recess vacation. That used to be the nine days. 
So that is how we, we developed the, uh, uh, the Krishna uh, frame at, at the very early age. And now it is uh, spread uh, from that grouping almost all over the world. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Very nice. Nice to hear about those days. Prithu Prabhu preaching in Kanpur, IIT. Mm. Nowadays the devotees don't find it so easy to get into these places, I hear. Yes, Maharaj. Recently, Prithu Prabhu Maharaj was in there in Pune and then he graced our uh, house also and he promised that and we were recalling uh, the long break which we had it. In fact, uh, two years back, he, I, I met him after almost a long break of 20 years. You know. So now he promised that every year you will try to, whenever he's coming to India, he will come over here. No, very, very good, yes. <laughs> Certainly, he did a lot of uh, very powerful preaching. He's a very powerful, very po wonderful preacher. I'm a great admirer of Prithu Prabhu. All right, so that's by the presence of powerful devotees, certainly they can create the atmosphere of Vrindavan. And sometimes, of course, people, not everyone is so fortunate to get that opportunity to associate with powerful personalities to create the mood of Vrindavan. We can do things to help it ourselves, you know. We can do things like put up pictures of the holy places, not just pictures of deities, but maybe a picture like Govardhan Hill, a picture of the cows there in Vrindavan and Govardhan, these kind of things. Pictures of Radha Kund. And you can also, of course, you want to have holy trees like Tulsi, you want to have a Tulsi tree there at least, try to have Tulsi in your home. And you want to uh, have a nice altar and decorate your altar, create the Vrindavan mood. When we go to Vrindavan, it's always so amazing to see so many flowers and so, much, so many flower garlands. And, oh, it's just an ocean of flowers and garlands of all descriptions. So, this is like the Vrindavan mood. And of, then, of course, kirtan is very important. So you want to have the Vrindavan mood, you want to be playing kirtan, listening to bhajans and kirtans, because kirtan is always going on in Vrindavan, in Krishna Balaram Mandir. It goes on 24 hours practically. And so that's part of the Vrindavan mood. And Prabhupada, Prabhupada told us, he said, I may be sitting here in America, but I'm always thinking of Vrindavan. I'm always in Vrindavan. So, devotees, we also want to think about Vrindavan, think about the pastimes which happened there. And of course, we sing the songs. There's the Vrindavan Mahamina, Maham, Mahima, Mahima Mrita, Jai Radhe, Jai Krishna, Jai Vrindavan, and sing about all the different holy places around Vrindavan. That's also very nice. I had the opportunity to visit Nepal. I was up in Kathmandu and they were singing that song every day, every evening. They would sing that song, Jaira. So hearing that song, you remember Vrindavan and all the places, the holy places of Vrindavan. So Prabhupada, pure devotees can live anywhere. And Prabhupada travelled a lot, but his heart, he said, Vrindavan is my home. Mayapur was his office, uh, oh, Mayapur was place of worship, and Bombay was his office, but Vrindavan was his home. So, we want to, we have to, we want to more create that atmosphere of Vrindavan through devotional service. Oh, it's getting a bit late tonight, you know, I, I don't think we'll finish this chapter tonight.
We'll have to go on tomorrow. But let's have a look at this question. Mood and mission. Read the third paragraph. Read the third paragraph of the purport. This is text number 14, right? Text number 14, the third paragraph, and then answer the following questions. How does this passage relate to Srila Prabhupada? What features of his life demonstrated this? Write down a few, a few words that you feel best describe the ideal temple in terms of the mood and atmosphere. <laughs> and then, what can you do to improve the atmosphere of your home or temple? So it's a bit of a, <laughs> takes some time for us to do this exercise. What you can do, I think what I'd like you to do today is make a note of these questions and think about them tonight. And when we come back tomorrow, we'll begin with this. I want to hear from you. I want to hear about what do you feel is the ideal temple in terms of the mood and atmosphere. Just a few words to describe that. And th that's what I'm really interested in. I'd really like to know what do you think to be the ideal temple in terms of the mood and atmosphere. Not just the, not talking about the material facilities or the, the, the building, or, but the, the actual mood and the atmosphere which is there. You know, when you enter a place you can feel the mood and the atmosphere is created by the people rather than the building. So what can you do to improve the atmosphere of your home or temple? So is everyone make, it, make, it, make a note of these questions? Because today's a codice and I don't want to go on too long. But we'll continue tomorrow night with this eighth chapter. All right? Yes, Father. So thank you, thank you very much. So we'll see you tomorrow night. Hopefully we can begin on time tomorrow. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Hare Krishna.